Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today is all about the types of diversity and how we actually calculate diversity. <clears throat> and it's going to be pretty fast, so don't hesitate to stop and pause to read stuff. So, before we start, I want you to understand what a keystone species is, and that's really just a species that has a larger effect than you would expect. So the wolves in Yellowstone, like we read about, beavers are what's called an engineer species. They create an ecosystem, literally. So these guys are keystone species. So what are types of diversity? We got species diversity, we've got genetic diversity, and we've got habitat diversity. And based on these things, we're going to explore the question, which of the two ecosystems here is more diverse? Okay, so let's start with genetic diversity. And that's pretty much what it says. It says, what's the variation of DNA within uh, that population? Okay, and sometimes we also look at individuals, but it's individuals or population, more often population. So humans typically reduce genetic diversity by selecting for certain crops. So we take an area like a prairie that might have 100 plants, and instead we put in soybeans. Those soybeans have very similar genetics, especially if they happen to be genetically modified. So that reduces genetic diversity in an area. Um, species, if we look at that they're composed of both individuals and populations, it makes sense, doesn't it, that each individual is going to have a little bit different genetics. Just you look at the person next to you, they have different genetics. We, look, we carry that out, populations have different genetics, and then, um, and so we would expect there to be more variety with more populations, okay? If you look at gray seals, there's like one or two populations of gray seals in the world, so there's almost no genetic diversity. But if you look at humans, we have tons of pockets of populations, right? Every continent has a population of humans, and a lot of times they've been isolated, so they've developed differently. We look at it together now with globalization, we can get together and we're mixing tons of genetic diversity. So humans have a huge amount. Now let's look at species diversity, sometimes called species richness, by the way. And the total number of species found in an area, that's what species diversity is, okay? And that area can be a national park like Yosemite, or it can be the state of Missouri. Um, some areas like rainforest or coral reefs have super high species diversity. But other areas like tundras or cities have kind of low species diversity or low species richness. But that's not the only way that we measure this. We also look at a thing called species abundance, okay? And it's not to be confused with richness or diversity. What it really says is, okay, you got two areas and they both have uh, 10 species. So that's the same. But one area has two of each type and one has 10 of each type. We would say the one with 10 of each type has more species abundance, and we'd say it's more diverse. So let's look at habitat diversity. That's the last of our three. And it's really just in an area, how many different kind of habitats are there? And somewhere like a rainforest is going to have the most because they also have all these areas that go up. And each one of those contains a habitat. And each one of those habitat has more species diversity. And each species diversity has more genetic diversity. So crazy biodiversity. But how do we measure this stuff? Well, we use a thing called the Simpson Biodiversity Index. And there's several of them. The one we look at is the Simpson Reciprocal Index. And what's important here is to know that one is the lowest ranking and the highest ranking is how many ever species you have. So if you have 10 species, that's the highest ranking you can have. All right, so here's the formula. What's important here, you can stop and write this down. You should be familiar with this. Big N just means total number of individuals in the area all the species. Little n is, is the number of each individual species. So the number of squirrels, number of rabbits. So if we do this, if I give you these numbers, I'm going to ask you the question, hey, which one's more biodiverse? And you might notice they have the same species diversity. So their big n is the same. So that number is the same. The big question becomes in the abundance. And when you do the math, it comes out that area A has an index of 3.18. And area B has an index of 2.19, so area A is more diverse. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please, please stop and talk to me about it. Otherwise, <clears throat> I hope you have a great evening. Go enjoy the snow and peace out, homie. Polish hen. <laughs>